Let us be seated. I want to take this opportunity to greet you all in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Wana Yesu asifiwe. How are you today? Yes, I am also fine in the Lord. And my name is Elizabeth Kimani. And I love the Lord as my Savior. I am a witness of the saving grace of Jesus Christ who saves and keeps. Because that is what he has done in my life. And today I'm happy that I have had an opportunity to come so that we can share the word of God with the people of Isili and also commission our women. And we are indeed grateful for the growth that the Lord is giving us even now. And uh, maybe briefly, I just want to say that we are moving on well and we, God, God, God is doing something new. Now, after the restructuring of the groups, there are many changes that are taking place. But I want to believe that they are for the good of the groups. And I want to believe that we are going far because God is on our side. There are many things I would have mentioned of uh, what we are doing. But because of time, maybe I can mention them in the other service. Let me just go straight to the word. Uh, I want to share a word that has a theme that we are chosen for service. We have been chosen for service. And even today as we celebrate the women, as we talk about commissioning, I was asking myself, what is this that we say is commissioning? And when I was looking at uh, that word, it, it says or, or it, is, it is explained as being chosen to do a special work. And God commissions us to different activities, to different services. It's not necessarily for the commissioning of the women's guild, but God in his own way and in his own time, he commissions us to do a specific task. And when I was looking at the Bible and, and, and looking at the many people who are commissioned to do different tasks, I, 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 I looked at this text of Isaiah chapter 6. And uh, Isaiah talks about that when King Uzziah died, that is when I saw the Lord. And I was asking uh, myself, why? 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 What is the relationship between King Uzziah and Isaiah during this time? It's just a brief history. If you want to know about the story of Uzziah or Uzziah, you can get it from 2 Chronicles, chapter 26. It is a whole story, in fact, a whole chapter about that king. But he's a king who came into power when he was a young man. He was only 16 years old. And he served the people of Judah for 52 years. So that was quite a long time. And during his reign, he was a powerful king. He had a big name. Initially, he was a good king. And God enabled him to achieve quite a lot. He built many towns, many towers. He won many battles against his enemies. And during that time, there was peace in Judah. He dug many wells because he was a man who loved soil. So he was a farmer by nature. And he had a lot of lands, vineyards, and farms, and many cattle, and many people who worked in his, in his land. For that reason, he became rich, he became powerful. He became famous. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5, that as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him and gave him success. Praise the Lord. As long as he sought the Lord. That is very key. As long as he sought the Lord. And during that time, the priest who was there, was, who was serving that time, was, uh, was, was also uh, the priest known as Zechariah. And he kept on seeking counsel from Zechariah. And Zechariah taught him how to fear the Lord. And for that reason, God worked with Uzziah all that time. But unfortunately, in the later years of King Uzziah, he became so proud. And this led to his downfall. And uh, one of the, 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 the most serious sins that he committed during that time he started to become proud is that he went into the temple. And he started burning incense. And this was against the rule of that day. Because that was the work of the priests. And when you read that story, it says that 81 priests 
gathered together. And they said, we will go to King Uzziah and tell him that whatever he is doing is wrong. And so they, took, they gathered courage. Of course, it is not easy to go to approach a king and tell him you are doing something wrong. So I'm sure it took them a lot of prayers and preparation and a lot of courage so that they can go and see the king. And when they went, they found him in the, in the temple burning incense. And they told him, King Uzziah, whatever you are doing is not right. He was so angry. But the Bible indicates that immediately he was burned with anger. God uh, 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 caused uh, leprosy. To, 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 yani, ilitokea hapa. This is what? Forehead. Yes, ilitokea hapa tu baramoja. Because God wanted to punish him. And for that reason, you know, when a man, when a, somebody has leprosy and you're in the temple, it is, it, it is not even allowed. So they pulled him away and the Bible says that he went somewhere in a house where he was locked in and he stayed there until he died. So during that time, because the king was not in line with the will of God, the people of Judah also, they started moving away from the presence of God. And you know, the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation. And of course, when we talk about a nation, we think about a king. So if a king is righteous, if a king is God-fearing, then what happens? Immediately the nation also is led towards fearing God. So when the king starts drifting away from the will of God, then also the nation starts drifting away. And this is what happened with the people of Judah. And so it was not a good time for the people of Judah in terms of their relationship with God. And for that reason, Isaiah says, when King Uzziah died, then I was able to see the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when he, one time he was in, in that temple and he saw a vision and he, God allowed him to see what happens in heaven. He allowed him to see, God allowed, allowed Isaiah to see him seated on the throne, highly exalted. And the Bible says that the, 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 the robe that God was in filled the temple. And there was smoke in the temple. And in, in the midst of that, you know, whatever he was seeing, then he saw the angels, of course, covered with wings. And what were they saying? That holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth is full of your glory. And in, in that, in that, in that, um, in the midst of that experience that he, he had with God, three things happened to him. Number one is that he was able to come to terms with the Holy God. Praise the Lord. And when he came to terms with the Holy God, then he was able to see his sinful nature. Because when we look at God, when we see him, when we understand the level of his holiness, then it is like a mirror. We are able to see ourselves. We are able to see our sinfulness. And he said, woe unto me, I am a man of unclean lips. And, and that time the angel took a call and he touched his lip and he was clean again. So as we are commissioned to do special services in the, in the, in the, in the house of God, it is important for us to know that we are serving a holy God. Amen? whom he says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16, that I am the Lord who has called you. No, I am, it says, in fact, it says that be holy for the one who has called you is holy. So our God is a holy God. And therefore he requires people to keep on cleansing, asking for the blood of Jesus to cleanse themselves because when we see the holiness of God, we look into our lives. And we can also see, like Isaiah, how unholy at times we might be. And the Bible also indicates that if we claim that we have no sin, then the truth is not in ourselves. But it also indicates that if we confess our sins, he is faithful enough to forgive us all our unrighteousness. Amen? And then after that, we see God asking, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Now the commissioning begins. And Isaiah says, send me Lord, I will go. We have been also been called at a time like this. And God is also asking, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And in the book of 1 Peter, 
1 Peter chapter, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, it is indicated that in the last days, in the last days, and this is the time that we have been called into to go and tell the people about the love of God. But the people we have been sent to are those people that are said to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, people who are boastful, people who are abusive, people who are brutal, people who are children who are disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, and forgiving, people without self-control, people who have a form of godliness, but yet they have refused the power of God. Those are the people that God is sending us to. But 2 Timothy 2.15 says that God is expecting that whatever we do, we will not be ashamed of it. And it says that uh, prove, present yourself as an approved worker who is not ashamed of what they are doing. Praise the Lord. That we must also prove to God that the calling and the commissioning he has given us, we will not fail him but we will faithfully do in accordance to what he has asked us to do so that we cannot be ashamed. And when we go to him, he will say, well done, faithful servant. Welcome and come and dine with me. Therefore, a few, we need to ask ourselves then, how do we fulfill God's commission? How? When he calls you, when he give you a special task, how do you fulfill it? And I'll mention just five things. And I believe when you go and think about them, they will help you to become a better worker in the Lord's vineyard. Number one is that for you to fulfill the mission of God, you must be connected with God. He's the one who gives you the mission, then you must know him. You must allow him to hold you. He, you, in the, you are a pot in the hands of a potter. And he will mold you and remold you until you fit in whatever circumstance God wants you to work in. Remember when Moses was being, was being sent to, to, to go to the children of Israel and deliver them? He said, I am a stammerer. And he gave God many, many excuses. But God did not hear of them. In fact, he kept on giving an answer. Because he used to say, I am like this. God says, then do this. Then. And finally, he told him, I have given you Aaron. Aaron, that he, you will go with him and then you'll be able to deliver my message to Pharaoh. Look at Jeremiah. He's saying that I am so young. I am so young. But God is telling him, I have given you this commission. That it is a time for you to uproot and to pull down. It's a time for you to plant good things. So when we are commissioned by God we are con and we are connected with him, then he is able to mold us. Because when the Lord calls us, he equips us. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you are a father. It doesn't matter how you are. Because God searches the hearts of men. And when he searches us, he's able to see this is the person that is ready to fulfill my mission. So be connected to God. Have a good relationship with him. Talk to him. Be a friend to God so that he will guide you. He will order your steps as you fulfill his mission. Number two, this is also good and important to, be, to note that as we serve and as we, uh, uh, as we work in whatever task he has asked us to do, we are going to face many trials, many temptations, many challenges. It is not going to be an easy way. It's not going to be a bed of roses. Yes, there are blessings as we, as we work in the Lord's vineyard, but in the midst of those blessings, at times we face challenges. At times we face trials. But Jesus prayed for us. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he said that in this world you will face many troubles. But take heart because I have overcome the world. I expect a bigger amen. Yes, he has overcome for us. And Romans chapter 8 talks about that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who gives us strength. So even as we go through the challenges that we, we face as we serve the Lord, let's know that we are overcomers. And not only overcomers, but even more than overcomers. Then, number three is that it is important we focus, focus on the task that we have been given by God. 
Do not allow yourself to be distracted because there are many distractions, many things that keep, may keep us away from focusing. Paul said that I fix my eyes on Jesus who is the author and perfecter of my faith. The one who has called you expects that we focus on him because he's the one to lead us so that we can fulfill the mission of God. So, so let us focus. I, I, I imagine a, a, a runner who is running. He's running and he wants to finish his race. But, but uh, as, as he runs, there are people on the side. Others want to greet him. Others want to give him some water. Others want to talk to him. Suppose he go greeting and picking the water and talking to these people by the side. Chances are he might not finish this race. He might even stumble and fall. He might even lose and go away from his lane. But a runner, a good runner, he does not even see them. He does not even hear what they are saying. Because his focus is to finish the race. Praise the Lord. So our focus is Jesus. Whatever task he has called you to do, ensure that you are focusing on it. You are giving it the attention that it, it, it deserves so that you can finish the race and finish well for the glory and honor of God. Then number four is that as we uh, fulfill the commission that God has entrusted us with, it is good to obey the voice of God. It's important that we hear what, is God, is, what God is saying. Sometimes we want to, uh, to consult other people, but there's a likelihood they might mislead us. I think of Abraham. When he was told that go and sacrifice uh, your son on the mountain of Moriah, suppose he consulted a few people. What do you think they would have told him? I know, I and I also think that he even never, um, I don't know, but I tend to think that he never even talked to the wife. Because you can imagine, suppose it was me waiting for a child for 25 years, and then somebody comes to tell me, Atimugu amesema tuende. And you know, him going up with the son means that he will not come back with him, of course, alive. See, at the sacrifice, at na he he's gone and gone forever. So he never consulted, but he heard clearly the voice of God. And he climbed to the mountain, but on the mountain the Lord provided. Praise the Lord. So hearing the voice of God. First Samuel 15, uh, Samuel is saying that obedience is better than sacrifice. Because sometimes we want to really do many other things and ignore that voice that is talking to us. When you hear the voice of God, obey it. And a singer once time said, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and all together trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and all. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Only if you trust and obey. Then the last one is that our service must yield results. Mm. We will not just work. You do though. Because God is a God of results. He expects to give you something to enable you to do a certain task, but you must also bring something home. Praise the Lord. No no kie kiodo kinamageda. You must come with something. And uh, you must be willing to add value in the kingdom of God. Don't just come sit and wait. Otorea watarie, no wakore, no wakoro asha. Something must happen. You must bring resource. And Jesus said that you did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruits, fruits that will last. Praise the Lord. So we are expected to yield resource. We are expected to bring in something. So as you work, work smart. Praise the Lord. Even in the kingdom of God, God needs smart people who will be able to look behind and say, 
this year I've been able to do one, two, three, four. And with that, the Lord receives the glory and we receive the blessings. So may the Lord help us. Amen. As we be connected to God, be aware that it's not going to be easy. Focus on the task that God has given us. Obey the voice of God and yield results. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to hear your word. Thank you for speaking to us, reminding us that you have called us for service. And in your kingdom, there are no spectators.